Would you guys leave me alone? Jeez. You know, I'm really getting kind of sick and tired of this. I can't really get any work done when you keep bugging me like this. So, but you're here. I'm here. I've stopped work. Let's, uh, might as well do this episode. Um, actually, I'm sorry it's taken so long for the episode four. Is it four? Four? To, for me to work on. I've just been really busy. Um, and... You know, this is like charity work, so, you know, give me a break. Um, so t- on today's episode, we're going to be talking about die lines. What are they and how to use them? Um, uh, recently, I saw a post on Reddit um, by a young designer or a student, and they had to put some art on a die line, and they didn't know what the fuck it was or what they were doing. And um, that's that's perfectly all right. Um, it's, a, it's a technical aspect of design um and maybe one that's not completely taught so great in schools so let's talk about so first thing i want to show you is this a piece of wood this piece of wood this is what an actual die is you know get get beyond your computer and your ones and zeros um so this this die line this is a small one but this actual die it has metal, uh, you call it? I'm sure it has a technical name, uh, metal bars, cutters um, that have been inserted into the wood. Um, everywhere where you see one of these sponges that have been applied, that's where, that's where the die cuts, okay? And everywhere where there's no sponge, that's a scoring, right? Um, if, you, if you were here with me, which I'm glad you're not, um, you could you if you put your finger on this, you could tell that this was sharp and this was dull. Um, now the reason that these sponges have been applied is because when the die is used, the the paper gets stamped on here. Or this, you could think about this stamps on the paper. The sponges are there to push the paper off so they don't get stuck on the die. So let's. Um, I'll show you a little video I took several years ago of this die in use okay so i'm going to go small which is good because it's not pretty over here okay so this is after the the paper's been printed on these are screen printed um then they need to be die cut um this machine that romero our die cutter is using is oh, well over 100 years old this technology is not new uh, by any stretch so let's check this out I'll just turn the sound off here. Um, so if you can see my mouse here, the die is attached to this part. The paper is being put on and off, and every time the, the clamshell clams up, it's being stamped, and he takes it off. So you can see the die right in here. Now this is the most sort of uh, basic, basic, antique, ancient way I guess you could call it ancient, um, of using a die. Now, but the technology really hasn't changed. Um, I mean, they're using laser cutters to, to, to do the, the scoring in the wood, to put the metal things, but it's all still applied by hand. The things are bent. Um, the machines, the die cutting machines, they've gotten really big. They've got, they use laser technology to, to register it and all that stuff. Um, but the same principle is the same. The die sits in one place, the paper comes through, stamp, stamp, stamp. That's it. So that's what, that's what a die is. So let's, let's, let's look at some really simple examples. Um, the most simple example um, I downloaded this from Jack Prince, our buddy at Jack Prince. This was a die. Um, you call it a die. You call it a trim line. A die is usually involves more folding and stuff like that. But this is the basic, and I thought this was really good to show first, right? If you want to, if you want to design a business card, how do you how do you do that? Um, so the the blue line is what's called the trim line. Uh, now it's not always going to be blue. It could be black. It could be whatever. It doesn't matter. But they've indicated that's the trim line. 
the the safe area. Uh, let's talk about the bleed. So the bleed is goes all the way out to the edge. You always want to design with bleed. Be a be a professional. Design with bleed. Um, it's typically a quarter inch around. It all depends. Some printers will be more. Some printers will be less. Um, but it's up to you to, to to put it on there. The safe area. You can think of that as just sort of the inverse of the bleed. Um, you know, when these things are getting stamped out from the die, they're the paper can expand, it can shrink, it could be off a little bit. So that's what the bleed is for and the safe area is for, is so that paper can sort of slide around there at the 32 hundredths of an inch sort of variance and it still kind of look okay, right? So that's sort of your basic, that's your basic, basic, basic. Um, this video is probably gonna be pretty short, by the way. Um, so, Jesus, okay. So here's a die. Here's a simple die that I got. I've actually been working with this one recently. This is, I got this from a manufacturer in China. Um, it had literally no information on it. Um, typically, your fold lines will be maybe a different color or they'll be uh, dotted lines, right? This, there was nothing like that on this, right? It, this, was, this was it. There was no bleed variance. There was no nothing. Um, so when you work with something like this, you kind of, to some degree, you want to, it, it helps to know what you're doing, right? So, okay, I get a file like this. What, what's the first thing I want to do? The first thing I want to do, if it's as simple as this, I'm going to layer this. I'm going to call it the die line layer, right? And then I want to make another layer. I want to call it artwork. Because you never, ever, ever want to put your artwork on the same layer as your die. So I, I put the artwork below the die line in the layers. Now, the second thing I want to do is I want to find the, the, the vertical and horizontal center of each of my panels, right? So if you think about the front panel as its own artboard. So, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Artboard. So there's like, there's four side panels and two front and back panels and then the hang, hang tag panel, right? So each one of those things you can think about as its own sort of artboard. So the problem is when I click on one of these artboards, it's not like an actual, it's not giving me the center. Um, and there's probably better ways to do this, I'm guessing. Um, but this is how my brain works. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it mildly. So I'm gonna copy and paste that front panel. Now let's just turn it a, let's turn it a color so, we, so it's easier to see what we're doing here. Now what I can do is create something that does have a center, like a circle, like this. And I'm gonna take those two objects, I'm gonna use the Pathfinder tool, and I'm gonna to align them vertically and align them horizontally. Now, I'm gonna take this using snap to point. You snap to point, you morons. Um, I'm gonna snap it to that point. So with my rulers on, and I wanna make sure I'm in the artwork layer now. So let's move this to the artwork layer. Oh, Jesus. Using the snap to point, I'm going to find the vertical and the horizontal, horizontal, horizontal <laughs> center of each one of those, each one of those panels, right? So now I just need to do that for each panel, artboard, whatever you want to call it. Panel. There's, there's other ways I could do this too. You know, I could take this, I could copy the dimensions and, and make my own square or rectangle and that would, that would give me the same thing. Um, you do it like you want to do it. I'll do it like I want to do it. Okay, okay. But using that snap to point makes everything really fast, really accurate. No guesswork. Guesswork is for chumps. So just trying to find that that center. Oops, this would make a lot more sense if I turn the guides on. Jeez, I'm a fucking moron. Okay. 
And then I can also put guides on the edges if I wanted to as well, but I don't want to. I'm lazy. I don't, I don't really need those guides so much. Now the center of this would also give me the center of the hang, the hang tag. Okay, so that's that's sort of the first thing that I do when I when I have uh, when I get a new die. I set up all my guide marks so I know what that you know you, you, as a professional designer, don't eye that shit up. Measure it, and thankfully Illustrator um, is set up for you to do that. So the second thing you do. What I like to do is I need to create a, a bleed line. You can see there's no bleed indicated on this package. So when you have something like this, the easiest way to do, and a lot of times you'll find dies, the, the lines don't connect at all. There's no squares. There's no shapes. It's just a bunch of lines that aren't even grouped together. So here's a sort of a tricky way that I like to do it. I'm going to copy the whole die line. Let me just paste it. Okay. Let's... Oops. Let's add a, let's add a, uh, I think it's six point stroke will give me the proper bleed. Three, three points. I think so. I should know this if I'm giving you a tutorial. Um, I'll line it up with my die, snap it to that point, and then expand it. So what I've done here is I've we changed the color here. So I've turned it from lines to shapes now, right? And so now what I what I need is I want that ju I just want that outside shape. So oops. Unite everything. There we go. I'm going to hold shift and click that that outside bit. So now what I've got is a functioning bleed area. Now, that may have not been enough, but it all depends. But that's sort of an easy way to sort of go about creating a bleed line. And then once your artwork is done, you can sort of mask it off using that bleed line. Now, if you're smart and know what you're doing, you'd be like, wait a minute, I think you made a mistake. I did. So this, this panel, even though it's not indicated on the die, this is the, what's called the glue panel. Um, the glue panel is typically not, uh, you don't want to have any printing on that because um, you don't want to interfere with the, with, the, with the gluing, right? So the, so the bleed should really just go to there. Let's just divide that. I just, I just eyed that up. You know, the bleed is, you kind of just need some. <laughs> doesn't have to be that accurate. A lot of bleed lines you'll also see are not going to be printed on these. These are called dust flaps. Um, and the tuck flap, the top and bottom tuck flap. The, um, I, actually think, I actually think a die looks cleaner if you do print all the way on those. You know, because you, because the consumer will see those things the, when they open it up. So unless your printer objects for some reason, I always like to do my artwork on there, right? Um, this weird shape on the front of the die, that is a die cut window. Um, let's not use their die cut window at this moment. I'm just gonna get rid of it um, because it's stupid. Um, so there's our guides. I'm gonna lock the, the die line layer because I don't need that right now. So let's just throw some art on here. Um, Some silly artwork from the podcast. Just got this. I'm not going to design anything good at the moment. I just want to kind of show you. So 
So let's say I want my whole package to have this sort of pink, uh, pink lion guy on it. So just kind of, I just want to size it at this point, sort of. Just stretching that thing out. Command D to pull it out. But the, and this is already being masked. Oops. I'm going to flip it so my line head is on the cover. Okay, because this is the front, this is the back. If you wanted to, you could you could label those things for yourself if you, if you felt like you needed to. So if I want this to not be so messy and help me to see what I'm doing, I can take that, that bleed line. I'm going to copy that, drag it into this layer. Let me delete that. Uh, and then I'm going to select all three of those things, Command-7, mask it off. Right, so now it's in that, it has that bleed. So if I need to put, almost on every package, there's some sort of branding or logo or something like that. Now these, these guidelines are going to help me immediately show me where I'm supposed to put it, right? I'm using the snap to point. Bing, bang, boom. It's kind of a weird color combination right now. But... Um, Now, of course, when you're dealing with, you know, you might have to get barcodes and nutrition panels and deal with regulatory um, labeling of, like, you know, if you're doing a beer or something like that, um, you have to put the Surgeon General's warning, all that stuff. I'm not going to get into that stuff because that's not really what this is about. This is about um, how to work with the die and how to set up your file. So when you when you send the when you save this out and send it off to the printer, you know, it's always good, really good to have a good relationship with your printer so that you, you can ask them questions and they can tell you what kind of formats they needed. And so many times I've sent off things to the printer and they're like, oh, we work in CS3. I was like, well, why the F didn't you tell me that when we started the project a month ago, right? It's just annoying things like that. So try to develop a good relationship with your printer. Um, so when, when I'm getting ready to save this out, you need to save it as typically they want the 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 working illustrator files, the final working illustrator files. You know, if there's placed images, you can embed them. Um, I like to embed them instead of sending them a bunch of placed images because I just feel like shit could mess up if I just send them a bunch of links, you know, additional files. I don't want them fucking with it. So I just, I try to embed the links, you know, and you do that by um, going in here, clicking on this and saying, uh, embed the image. It, this one is already embedded, but um, yeah. Um, so you would send them, you know, if you, if it's your working file, and I work like this too. I'll have a, all kinds of shit in the outside the margins. Just make sure you're sending them. Just clean it up, clean everything up, get rid of any layers that you don't need. Um, if this is the artwork. If there's any type. You can send them the type, or you, or if you don't want to deal with that shit, you can outline it, um, depending. Um, and that's kind of how that's it's really basic, really simple um, of when you get a die, how to set it up. You know, set up your layers, set up your guidelines, set up your bleed, and work with it. So that's a that's a pretty simple one. But let's um, let's do something a little different. So. This is a die that I also received from a printer. This is for a six, this is a six pack, six pack beer carrier, right? So when you get something like this, this is, this looks intimidating and, it, and it's vastly more complicated than, than the die I just showed you. But the principles are the same. Um, so the first thing I, I do if you get something this complicated as like, is this is I go out and get an actual six-pack carrier that I can see at the at 7-Eleven around the corner, and I tear it apart, right? And it helps me understand. Now, not every six-pack carrier die is the same. They're all proprietary to the printer or whatever, but they're all basically the same. So go out, get an actual six-pack, rip it apart, see what actual panels are printed on, and, and all that jazz. Um, now, when they sent me this, they sent me no directions, no, no, nothing. 
they're like, here you go, because the printer expects any designer to know what the heck they're doing. The problem is, is a lot of us don't. Um, but that, that just comes with time and experience. So what I did was I eliminated all of the confusing stuff, all of the notes, all of the measurements, all of the, the lines, right? And I just boiled it down to the, the stuff I really needed, the very simple actual die line, the things that were going to fold or score and cut. These are the fold, these are the score and cut lines. Now, um, you can see that all the score and cut lines are in the blue. Um, so that made it a little bit easier. So then the second step that I'm going to do, that I would do, is what I did, is I set up, I tried to, I'm using colors and shapes here to help demonstrate this, but these are all the panels that where the artwork goes, right? So this, this all this stuff is hidden, uh, no one sees this, so you don't print on those panels. So this is all set up with the proper bleeds of each panel, right? And where the artwork goes. And so that would help me work on it, And because if you think about this as one big piece of art that you have to lay art on, it can get confusing. I also take each of those panels and I did exactly what I did with the last one. I'm finding the vertical and the horizontal center of each one and then the edge, the sides on, on these ones as well. Um, and so that right away will help me. So it can be confusing to work directly upon this. So, you know, if you want to, you could take this panel that you created and, and subdivide it. You know, you could say um, side one. turn everything else off and just work on this alone. Make sense? And then once it's, once it's all done, you can turn on all your sides at the same time, turn on your template, that sort of deal. And that's sort of, that's, uh, that's how it goes. So that's a little more complex of die, but it's the same thing. Dotted lines for folds, solid lines for cuts, figure out what your panels are, set up your guidelines, and then, uh, and then the rest is up to you. Um, here's something. This is interesting. This is um, for a beer can. I probably shouldn't be showing this. I blocked out the, the design agency that, that, who did this because I did not do this. Uh, but I got access to it. Um, uh, hopefully they won't send me a cease and desist. They'll never see this. Um, or, Bud, or Bud Light. Um, so this, you can see all the layers over here, and I think this is a really good indication of a professional design studio, how they're laying out their layers. And this is the file they're sending to the printer. On the top layer, they have callouts. I've actually never seen this many callouts on a file. There can be, I've seen, I mean, I've made callouts. It's basically just notes to the printer. Um, this is, I, I'm not sure why. You know, because maybe the money's so big from Bud, the Bud Light, they're printing so many of these, they can't mess up. They have to, you know, double check. I don't know why there's so many notes on this one. I don't know. Um, a slug. This doesn't really have to do with die lines, but you'll see this a lot. Um, when, when you're sending artwork to a printer, this is going to tell you the scale, the date, the information, the file name, the typefaces, and then probably most importantly, the Pantone colors. Now, I'm not going to talk about spot colors too much in this one or, or how to lay out spot colors, but it's, it's similar to how to, it's basically how you do for screen printing. It's just um, assigning uh, a Pantone color to each one. So what, the two things that are interesting about these Pantone colors I want you to notice is the can substrate. So everything that you see gray, the printer is actually not going to print, right? Because that'll be the can showing through. And then everything that is in this pink color is actually going to be printed white because you can't really, there's no Pantone for white, which is really annoying. Um, and some printer, I tried to set up a file like this once to send to a, a client, a printer that I'm not gonna name, and they couldn't get over it. They couldn't figure out why pink was supposed to be white, so I, I sent it to them white, and they're like, well, we can't, 
our our color separating thing is not picking up the white. I was like, okay. So I had to find like the lightest Pantone I could. It was so stupid. Um, but typically making it pink like this is sort of how it goes. So this is what they're calling their dye line, um, which is is a lot like the business card. It's just the template, right? Let's see if they don't have any guide marks. Right, there's some notes on here, you know, like they need the copy to stay within here. The litho, as in they print on a, it's a like a lithographic whatever th sheet, and then it's um, like shrink wrapped on the can. Um, yeah, there you go. This this is like I think the overlap layer, right? So this area, right? So and then they've separated their artwork into three different layers. They've got uh, the legal which is basically, this is the stuff that's going to go in every single can. Um, uh, if you ever see FPO on something, that means for placement only. That's basically someone else. This is not final yet. We still have to put the final barcode in this. That kind of thing, which is a good way to, people do that so things don't accidentally get printed with the wrong barcode or the wrong legal copy or something like that. Artwork, so this is the stuff that sh sort of changes every time. The logos, because they did like one beer can for every Super Bowl win. Um, and then the background. So when you when you had to do, when they, they had to do 50 of these, so it was really made sense for them to templatize the, 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 the where the logos went and all that kind of stuff, which is, I definitely recommend. Um, so that's a really simple, die even though it's just a rectangle but that's kind of how you deal with it so let's look at some other stuff so here's a die that we created this is actually i think it's the die that i showed you at the beginning here so this is a little paper toy so this is a die that we created um and you know you could spend a lot of time learning about all the names, but the real basic stuff you need to know, and you'll you'll learn this over time, is you know this is a dust flap, this is like a tuck flap, this is a locking tuck flap, this little thing here, um, the glue the glue panel, um, the fact that dotted lines means fold, solid lines means cut, you know those basic basic things. So this is like a no glue. Um, this is a no glue, actually, so this is not a glue panel. These little tabs get stuck into here. So we did this for Facebook. We've done a, we've done a couple of these for them. This was like a little elf they gave out at the holidays to remind people to like turn off your stuff because they were going to be updating something. I probably shouldn't be showing this either. Um, but you can see that it's just designed with bleed so that there's some allowances from the printer. Um, that's basically it on that. Um, so one of the best um, resources for you out there to sort of get your hand on some dyes, because you know maybe you're not, you know, no one, no one from China is sending you these things, and I apologize about that. Um, one of the best resources is, is the dyeline.com. It's a blog. You probably heard of it, but several years ago they put out two separate books of, of dye lines, free PDFs. I don't know, Google it. Um, Google, actually, don't Google it. I'm going to have a link in the description. Um, but these are really great. They, have, they typically have three or four different kinds of, of packaged dye lines. Um, shopping bags, rigid boxes, folding boxes, gift card carriers. Now, rigid boxes are kind of its own, uh, Google it. It's its own thing. Kind of, you really want to kind of be concerned with the folding boxes, I think. Um, so here you can look, you can see their dies, right? The same way that kind of my die was, um, but with a new thing. When there's a glue panel, there's typically uh, horizontal 45 degree stripes going. What's nice about this is they show you the die and then they show you what it looks like folded up. Um, which, because it's really hard to uh, sort of visualize a flat thing turning into a 3D thing, 2D to 3D. Um, 
So I'm just going to quickly flip through these. So these really give you a lot of different types of folds, different types of uh, glue panels, different types of, of die cuts that will include like different types of uh, closures. You know, if it's a locking bottom, if it's a glue bottom, it's a, a tuck tab bottom, you know, that kind of thing. Um, rigid boxes, that's a completely different monster. But when you're designing for them, the, the, the principles are the same. Um, let me flip this really fast to get some to the folding boxes. Okay, so, you know, once again, this is the exact same as we saw in the example I showed, right? It's got the locking tuck. And if you don't know, if this is confusing, these words I'm using, just go in your pantry and take apart some of your common everyday die, die lines and, and un, you know, cut them open and lay them flat. And then you can really see how they function and how they work. Um, this is an auto locking bottom. There's another one. Okay, so let's say you download these things. What you can do... Oh, there's also a, a second book, which is nice, FYI. Um, close all tabs. So let's say you were, you're going through that, and you're like, oh, I really like this box. I want to use that for my, um, my hoo-ha, my, I don't know, skateboard wheels that I'm working on um, for my client. Um, What you can do is, if you take note of what page it's on, I can take this file and I can drag it into my Adobe. And through here, I can, you know, find out which page, right? This is six, so I just type in six here. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about the typefaces, you don't need that stuff. And then I have I have vector of the die now. All I, all I have to do is get rid of all the crap I, uh, I want to get rid of. Now at this point, what do I do? I go, I call it a die line, artwork, right? I'm setting it up like I want to. Now maybe I want a bag that's going to be taller than this, you know? I could easily grab it, holding shift and pulling it up. Now I've just changed the dimensions in how the, the, the bag works. But it's a good place to sort of practice and study and figure out different types of dies and how they fold together. What I'm also going to do is, in the description, I get a ton of lift, list of resources. So I'm going to show you some, I'll have links to some videos where you see some dies working in, in bigger capacities. I'm also going to send you links to websites where they can, you can put in dimensions and the dies will they'll pop out for you. Um, and they'll send you an AI file or uh, EPS file. Um, yeah, so if there's any no, dies can be, this was a really basic, but dies can be really uh, complicated. So if you have a question or if I missed something or I was confused or I confused you about something, just put the question in the, um, in the comments and I'll answer the, the, the comments. I mean, I don't have enough people listening or watching these videos yet. Thanks a lot for spreading the word, people, um, that... Um, you know, I still have time to answer all the questions, obviously. Um, so thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe to the channel, I guess. Um, follow me on Twitch. Listen to the AID podcast. And uh, I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.